The, the sermon that I've chosen today is Ezekiel 37. Turn with me to Ezekiel 37. Many of you know this, uh, this story quite well. It's the story of the dry bones, the valley of the dry bones. Ezekiel 37, verses 1 through 3, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, and I said, O Lord, thou knowest. Let's stop right there. You know, we're told that the Old, Te the Old Testament prophets wrote more for our day than they did their day. Are you aware of that? So actually, this is a parable, uh, a, a story not only for their day, but for our day. So let's see what we can get out of this. Applying it to us the house of Israel. Matter of fact, look at verse 11. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the what? The whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried out, our hope is lost, we are cut off for our parts. And you know what? There are people that believe that today in the church. They think, well, uh, there's just no hope, so they give up. Well, that's not the answer, is it? That's not the answer. Because God asked Ezekiel, uh, can these dry bones live? And uh, Ezekiel was very smart. <laughs> he didn't want to uh, try to outguess God. Because the Bible says that with God, with, Jesus says with men it is impossible, but with God what? All things are possible. So dead people can come back to life. Um, Ephesians 2.1 says, And you hath he quickened, or revived who were dead in trespasses and in sins. Amen? We walked according to the course of this world. We obeyed the prince and the power of darkness. But it goes on to say in Ephesians 2, But God, who is rich and in mercy, had mercy on us, and He helped us. Amen? That's what I told that, that man, Steve. I said, Steve, you've tried everything. There's one thing you haven't tried, and that's Jesus Christ. And I said, and he, he has, this is your special time right now. You'll never have a time like you have right now. And don't be like Pilate or like uh, uh, Felix who said to Paul, and I told him that story, who, who uh, Paul, Felix said to Paul, you almost persuade me, Paul, to be a Christian. That was his prime time. Never would he have an opportunity like that again. Felix wouldn't. Never. This is our golden time. I said, you will never have the Holy Spirit upon you like you have right now because I could see the tears. I said, now, now is the time. Take advantage of it. The Lord is touching your heart, you know. And I said, he came to me 21 years ago and I said, he brought me to my knees. Praise the Lord. And, uh, and so God, God is well able. Um, when uh, the angel came to Mary, remember Mary said how can these things be you know she was talking about being conceived you know being a virgin but she submitted she submitted and so God is going to do great things with people if they will only just surrender every day just surrender and say Lord take me and help me Lord it's impossible the situation that we're in today in North America with the economy being pretty good. and Lord, it just seems impossible. But Lord, you have a way. You have a thousand ways where we only know of one. Amen? Yeah. So God can do it. God can do it. And so we find uh, God told Ezekiel, Ezekiel, I want you to speak to these dry bones. Speak to these bones. And you know the story how that he spoke to the bones and in verse 7, so I prophesied as I commanded. And there was a great noise. And behold, there was a great shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon, upon them, and skin covered them above, and there was breath in them. No breath in them. 
Then he said unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man. Say unto the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. When we look at the church sometime, and we look at, uh, and, and, and we're really honest with ourselves. In North America, it seemed that, um, it seemed like we reached uh, maybe the highest number as far as numbers and attendance in church and, and our schools were vibrant and our churches were overflowing, at least some of them were. It seemed like that peaked probably back in the 50s or maybe the 1960s. Am I off by saying that? Or was that, is that about right? But it seems like ever since the 60s, Something's been happening to uh, the spirituality in North America. Not only in our own church, but all across North America alike, all the churches. Seems like spirituality has been waning and going downhill fast. It seems like ever since the 60s, since rock and roll got its real start, you know, with Elvis and his pelvis and, and uh, the Beatles and, and all the drug uh, culture that came in in the 60s and in the 70s, it seems like we have been losing spirituality fast. Amen? That's where we're going. And you look around and you say, Do we, we must, we're going to have to start a, 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 new, a new something to get something going. But God says, now hold on. What we, we've already got a church. What we need is a revival and a reformation. Amen? We've already got the people. God says, you need to prophesy under these dry bones. And they will come to life. We're told that there may be, it may be as dry as the hills of Gilboa, but the Lord is going to come into the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to bring a revival. He's going to bring a reformation. Amen? Amen. And he says it's even going to be of primitive godliness. Amen? Amen. God's going to do it. I just want to be a part of it. How about you? We, you know, we see a lot of people leaving, leaving, leaving. It's not the time to leave. It's the time to get, get closer to the Lord because He's drawing closer to us. Where sin does abound, grace doth much more does abound. So wherever there's, you know, because of the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and the 90s, because sin has come upon us, God's grace is there to help us and empower us. Give us His Spirit. And prophesy. Prophesy. Preach the Word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with, with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when people may not hear the words of truth, but there will be those who will hear it. Amen? And so we must be faithful to the calling. God promises that it may look bad. The church may appear as about to fall, but through the foolishness of preaching, there's going to be a revival and a reformation. Amen? I don't hear very many amens out there. Now, in the church, you may not have to say amen, but out here in the wilderness, it's all right. <laughs> it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And he said, uh, he said, breathe on them. Uh, Lord, the Lord came and he, he brought the air upon this, this uh, dried, uh, this dead corpse. It was just a dead corpse, but it finally did have the skin and everything that it was supposed to have on the, on the bones, but it was still dead. So he said, breathe on it. The Lord breathed on it. And what does air represent in the Word of God? God's Holy Spirit. We're told that every day we should be praying for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Every day we should pray, Holy Spirit, use me. Because the purpose of the Holy Spirit is for what? Acts chapter, what is it, chapter 2 and 3, what does it say? When the Holy Spirit came in a, in a dynamic way, it says that they went forth doing what? Acts chapter, that's right, Acts chapter, where is that? Acts chapter 1, 1, 8. There it is. Thank you. But you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So when we pray for the Holy Spirit, we need to, we need to remember God's going to ask you to witness to somebody. Amen? He's going to ask you to witness somebody. So, so, you know, some people are afraid. They say, well, you know, if I pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Lord may ask me to do something that I don't feel that gets me out of my comfort zone. Well, try it. You'll like it. Try it. You'll like it. 
Another thing, if I, if I could assess uh, one thing uh, of the uh, churches of Hood River and White Salmon, I haven't been here very long, but if I could just assess one thing, and that is this. We, there's one thing we, we, we lack, one thing for certain, and that is Acts chapter 4 and verse 31. Acts chapter 4 and verse 31. It says, When they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spoke the Word of God with what? Boldness. Now, that's one thing that I wish we had a little more of out here in the Northwest. A little more holy boldness. You know what I mean by that? I, what I mean by that is you know the truth. I, I was at the Sabbath school, and you guys all know the answers. I, I, you know, I, because I'm listening, and you've got the right answer. But now we need to take that truth that God has given to us, pray for the Holy Spirit that God will use us to be able to share this with boldness with somebody else, you know? And we kind of, we, you know, uh, my wife, she's a fourth-generation Adventist, and I have to pick on her every now and then. Because I tell her, I said, you know, Adventists, we love to hang out with Adventists. We're good Jews. Jews love to hang out with Jews. You know, the, the uh, Jews, they didn't like to associate too much with those Gentiles because they might get smoke on them, you know, or they might, you know, those people might be eating pork or something, so we don't like to hang around them. But, you know, it would be good for us to hang around these people sometimes, just to talk to them and just hang out with them and and maybe eat with them a little bit or, or just socialize with them a little bit. We find ourselves as Adventists, we find that so uncomfortable, don't we? But it's good that we mingle. Now, the one probably that mingles with, with them more than anybody is probably Brother Kurt because he's a dentist and he's always working on people so he can tell them things and they'll listen, you know. <laughs> you know. So he, I know he shares. I know he does because he tells me. But, but we, can all, we all mingle with people. They come into the store or whatever, you know, and we can. And sometimes we need to be bold. Um, I was sharing with somebody not too long ago. I said, you guys have the perfect setup. You just now need to be finding the ones that you think are good interest in and just actually hand them a Doug Baxter tape and say, get this back to me in a week. They didn't ask for it. But, you know, if, if you know them and you know that they like you, you just to be amazed at what the Holy Spirit might do. But you got to step out in faith and, and, and be bold and sometimes do it. If that's one thing that we could just ask the Lord to help us with is being a little more bold, being a little more aggressive. Now, I'm talking about not being obnoxious. Uh, there's a difference between being obnoxious and being aggressive. You know what I'm trying to say? And if you can, in a very sweet and loving way, just ask somebody to listen to these tapes. Now, I never met this guy named uh, Ben Brewer. Anybody ever know of Ben Brewer? Yeah. I never met the guy, but I do know this. I see all of his tapes, and he was always loaning things, loaning things, because I can tell because he, he has his stickers on everything, and I can't get them off, you know. <laughs> oh, he puts put them on everything, you know. But he was out giving these tapes away. We need, a, we need a little bit of that Ben Brewer, whoever he was, you know. I've never met, met the guy. You know what I'm trying to say? We need, a, we need a little, and we need to get out of this rut. Well, we have the truth, and we do have the truth, but let's not keep it to ourselves. Let's not be one of those Jews back, you know, in the time of Christ. They kept it to themselves, and it actually became a curse to them because they were not willing to share it. When God gives us something, He gives it so we can give it away. Amen? We can give it away. Listen to this. Turn with me in your Bibles to 2 Kings 13.20. 2 Kings uh, 13.20. Kings 13.20. Sometimes when we look at uh, bones in the Bible, we always look at them as a source of death. Dry bones, they're dead. But in 2 Kings 13, 20, I'm in 1 Kings, sorry about that. Uh, did I say um, 2 Kings 13, 20? 2 Kings 13, 20, here we go. Here we find, because a man had a double portion of God's Spirit, his bones were a source of life. Verse 20, and Elisha died, and they buried him. 
And the bands of the Moabites invaded the land at the coming in of the year. And it came to pass as they were burying a man, that behold, they spied a, a band of men, and they cast the man into the sepulcher of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and he stood upon his feet. What an, what an experience. What an experience. What was happening is they saw this, uh, this Moabite army coming in. They were afraid, but they had to respect unto the dead. So they said, we can't just leave the guy here. So they, hurt, they very quickly just tossed it into Elisha's grave. And uh, what did Elisha have? Remember, he prayed for one thing. He prayed that, that, he, that he would have a double portion of the spirit of Elijah. Remember that? And Elijah said, man, that's a hard thing. I don't know if, that can, if I can request that or not, but I'll ask the Lord. And, and if, you, if you see me go and I give you my mantle, then you'll know it, it, it'll be done unto you. And that's exactly what happened. And Elisha had a double portion of the spirit of Elijah don't you want a double portion of God's spirit I, I want a double portion of God's spirit and these la these end time because it's going to take that it's going to take that to finish the work it really is it's going to take that and you know I couldn't help but noticing brother Jackson I mean the guy was just filled with the Holy Ghost and with power I mean I was just a mar I just I, I marveled because I marveled at at the outsiders that had never heard this before they came I said, where did all these people come from? We didn't even give them out invitations. We didn't even have brochures. I said, that was the Holy Spirit. I saw a, a, a greater measure of God's Spirit there that day, empowering that man. I said, man, I want, I want some of that Spirit that Brother Jackson has. <laughs> Amen? And God can help us all to be like that and to, be, and to, to just have boldness. We need that boldness. But you can't have the boldness until you pray for the Spirit. And you can't, you can't have the Spirit until we get some life in it. <laughs> you know, get, get the flesh and get everything like God wants. Yes, there's coming. There's coming a revival. There's coming a reformation. And let it begin with all of us. Because it's coming with or without me. It's going to happen. So I might as well be a part of it because if, if I'm against it, I'm going to be found on the outside of the city at the end of the thousand years. And I don't want to be resurrected a thousand years too late. Amen? So let, let the revival begin. Let's all be a part of it. Amen? It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And let's be a part of it. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for Ezekiel 37. Lord, it's a, it's a beautiful promise that even though our church will appear as about to fall, it won't fall. Because you will come with a powerful Holy Spirit. You will revive us, dear Father, and you'll help us. Those that remain, you will help. Oh God, help us to know and help us to have a desire to want to be a part of this great revival that's coming. For we know, Father, that before the true comes, we know the counterfeit will also come. And Lord, we don't want to be a part of that, but we want to be a part of that true Holy Spirit. So Father, give us a double portion of Thy Holy Spirit. And Lord, as, you, as we pray for that, reveal to us how that You want us to be bold and that You want us to be aggressive in a Christ-like way. Help us to invite people to watch things that we know that, that would be a blessing to them. Help us to give them books that, that we know would be a blessing to them. Help us in faith, dear Father, to be that witness that you would have us to be in our family and in our community. And we thank you, Lord, that you promise that you would bring this great revival of Ezekiel 37 into our, into our church, which is the apple of your eye. So, Lord, may it be so, because we pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless.